he's the next stage of humanity. Yeah. If if people are evolving, he's he's like looking at us from the next spot. He's like, hey guys, uh, I've got some ideas. You can actually see the language and the perspectives that maintain this ignorance over the masses. It's in everything from your TV shows to the very nature of how you communicate with each other. A lot of these accepted ways in society put up walls between our own intellect. It's obvious with each other, but between our own ability to question reality on our own. And what I've been saying for quite some time now is that it's not so much the aggressive behavior of people within this reality that are maintaining this space. It's mostly the passive aggressive actions of these individuals from the masses all the way to the smaller groups at the top. It's the passive aggressive nature that maintains this space because in that passive aggressive relationship, the manipulative seeds that grow into mass mind control, that grow into giant forests of mass mind control, are seeded by niceties, by passively aggressively selling you ideas that are supposed to be for your benefit or that are not threatening. And society does this overall when they convince you that war brings peace. The sentiment of war brings peace has been adopted largely by a specific group of people. Now, I'm not saying that the idea was invented by these people or carried out by only these people, but there's an argument that doesn't get spoken about that directly relates to that reality. And it's this understanding of genetic recessiveness. So we all understand that there is a genetic recessiveness with so-called white people or Caucasian people. And the way society has been designed to worship, psychologically worship, and want to copy these people at the expense of loving themselves, of knowing themselves, that mentality has been seeded into our consciousness as a means of self-defense for the group of people who are genetically recessive to the majority of the people around the world. That genetic recessiveness is not limited to just the physical body. What I'm saying specifically in this video is that genetic recessiveness carries over into the intellect and the relationship to this reality overall. And since the people who are subjected to this genetic recessiveness are aware of this reality, they have shaped and molded society and the relationships that people have with each other, even have with themselves, have been shaped and molded as a psychosomatic and automatic defense mechanism. So it's a defense mechanism to generate hate for oneself among the masses of people around the world, to generate a love for a particular people along with that hate for themselves within the masses of people around the world. This is at the core of why racism and racism white supremacy was created. See, a lot of people talk about racism and how it doesn't matter, but not enough people talk about how racism does matter and where it came from, what it does. It's easy, it's low-hanging fruit to throw racism out the back door and move on to the next important thing to speak about. Because the feel-good perspective and the loving perspective, the new age perspective, the more evolved perspective is this we're all one, we're all human. And beyond that, there's a fear overall of not only projecting a responsibility, but assuming responsibility for certain things. So people don't want to put that on people just as much as people don't want to assume that responsibility for certain events, certain realities that are known across the board. So the easy thing to do is just to sweep racism to the side, team up with the good guys. Even though these so-called critical thinkers are aware of the fact that this system is using this new age mentality of we're all one, we're all human, they're using that to hide their passive aggressive slash aggressive behavior. They're using that perspective to usher in the next mind controls. But since people are so caught up in 
being the good guy and being on the right team and not wanting to rock the boat, not wanting to lose subscribers, people avoid these subjects. So with this video, I wanted to explain how the concept of racism and whiteness, racism, white supremacy overall is just as much a control and very much connected to the control of separating you from yourself and the reality overall by generating a perspective of a heliocentric universe and by no means limiting to the heliocentric universe, but all of the side effects that come with that, your connection with aliens, your connection with the sun, your connection with disasters that come from the universe, these meteors, these comets that are coming out of nowhere that could destroy us, the going to Mars, the going to the moon, your highest thinkers in society, your Elon Musk, who base all of his decisions in life on developing a colony on Mars. It's just so weird to have a guy like that amongst us. Yeah, you know? especially uh, have him as your boss. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, he, he measures pretty much every major decision by whether or not it brings the day when we have a self-sustainable colony on Mars sooner or later. That's the prism by which he makes every like, every single decision he makes, he makes it through that prism. Jesus. Yeah. As if Mars is a actual physical place that you could go to on a physical rocket that is funded by all these billionaires. So like I said, once the awareness of this genetic recessiveness was known, the defense for that was to develop a system of intellect that hides that genetic recessiveness under intellectual superiority. It's just so weird to have a guy like that amongst us. And you're aware of this intellectual recessiveness when you see that the education system is based upon lies, that the cosmology is based upon make-believe, fakery, that your society is based upon manipulative control, death and destruction, that your plans for the future are based upon mistruths and a false, broken identity relationship with this overall reality, the downplaying of our ancestral intelligence. Why would you need to downplay anybody? Most people do that as a means to feel bigger. This is at the core, the essence of what racism is. Like Toni Morrison said, if you have to keep somebody on their knees in order for you to feel bigger, then you have a serious problem. And so-called white people have a very serious problem. The very identity of whiteness is an illusion. For what purpose? To maintain a superiority. Just as the opposite of that, blackness has a purpose to maintain a less than whiteness perspective, a minority perspective. This is why they call so-called black and brown people a minority. When we are the majority of the world, that's a psychological trap. That's a psychological mechanism to maintain superiority. Look at the way the maps are designed. You're on a sphere in space. There is no up and down even in a heliocentric universe. So why are the European nations at the top of the map? And when you flatten out that map, why are those nations made to appear bigger than they actually are? Bigger than the other countries, bigger than the majority people countries. And why are those maps hanging 24 seven in the education systems being pumped in, that mind control being pumped into these children at very early ages? Even before they get into school, they're seeing these Barney shows, these Mr. Rogers shows, these Yo Gabba Gabba's, these Dora the Explorers with her map showing you what the world looks like, how certain people are bigger and other people are smaller. This is why those maps are designed that way. So when people downplay the relationship that racism has to control overall, see that as a very giant red flag. For people, especially in the truther community, who have not gone to the depths of the reasoning and do not speak on the perspectives of why racism exists overall, yet they have very 
strong beliefs and strong perspectives on why you shouldn't speak about racism, why you shouldn't speak about the effect that race and racism has on the masses of people. Be very aware of these people because they are the defense mechanism. Whether they know it or not, whether they are doing it on purpose or not, they are the frontline soldiers of this ignorance, this war of ignorance. And like I've said in previous videos, the so-called black and brown brothers and sisters who are maintaining this ignorance are the most dangerous because it is us who have to come out of this ignorance. We have to come out. We have to drop all of these mind controls that are dressed in this space of an evolved truther, new age revolution. It's double jacked up. You have to see it as working twice against you. When you have people who are throwing ad hominem attacks on people who break down the origins of racism, who don't go into, who blatantly ignore perspectives like the teachings of Dr. Francis Cress Welsing and Neely Fuller Jr., who laugh at that, who scoff at that whole information because they have this entitled perspective of we're all human and none of that matters. Be very aware of that because largely those individuals have the ability to research this information and go to the depths of that. But it's twice destructive because for one, they are keeping people from realizing the truth in the depths of those realizations. And two, when that happens, people are not fully allowing themselves to inhabit their maximum potential because they have turned off a large part of their healing, a large part of their awareness, a large part of their connections under arrogance, under ego, and under this new age defense mechanism of, for one, thinking you know everything, and two, following this tidal wave of the mind control of we're all one, we're all human, this new age coming together, whitewashing, for lack of a better term, of the perspectives of this reality. And the avoiding of that information is at the core, like I said earlier, is at the core of this, what I'm calling recessive intelligence. The biggest awareness of this recessive intelligence was when the Moors went into Spain in I think it was like 700, seven something AD, and stayed there and ruled for 800 years. That put them to around 1500, which was when the kings and queens of that time started to reach their funky ass little tentacles around the world and sent Columbus over to the Americas. After that came the Victorian age. So there was something off, there was something wrong, like the people living in the European nations were not taking care of themselves, were very sick, were dirty, weren't even aware of what we take for granted every day, the cleanliness. This is not to come down on so-called white people. This is speaking basic history, historical observation. And since these perspectives are uncomfortable for people, this is why we don't go to the depths of this information and why this ignorance maintains its grip on the masses. So the Moors went into Spain, started cleaning everything up, installed all this plumbing and all these other modern day engineering marvels that we just accept every day as the norm. All this stuff was brought into Europe when the Moors came in there and started cleaning everything up. Once they became aware, once the Europeans became aware of their ways, learn their war tactics, learn their education. During that time, they cleaned themselves up and then took that intelligence and used it to conquer the world. Those 800 years sitting and studying, working out the strategy, realizing the differences between people, realizing the difference between a recessive genetic makeup and a non-recessive genetic makeup, feeling those insecurities, speaking with each other, and realizing if they don't do anything in regards to controlling the masses, the fear that generated within them from realizing the genetic recessiveness forced them to inflict war, 
to inflict control over the masses of the world. The first step was to send Columbus across the ocean to conquer the other large land masses. During that same time, this is when these maps were created. So after they sent their soldiers over there, over here, to conquer and enslave and destroy, kill, sicken the masses over here, during this same time, the intellectual war was being waged on the masses by the developing of these maps and the hiding of these maps. So the hiding of the maps of the North Pole, the hiding of the maps of the Antarctic circles, the hiding of the reality of there possibly being more land. Once this control grid started to move, that's when all the people of power started to get in and one little piece. So you had even more who were down with enslaving and destroying people and conquering lands because they were aware of the shift in tide and what was happening. They were aware of the psychology of a people who weren't about that war life. They weren't about that battlefield earth mentality. And since they were aware of that, and since those people were the majority, they knew that if they teamed up with them, they'd be on the losing team. So their morals, their relationship that they had with us went out the window. This is why you have so-called black people owning slaves, Arabs enslaving, Native Americans owning slaves, because it was a psyche, a psyche of survival. And like I said before, that survival mentality stems from and was birthed from that survival reaction, insecurity that came from a certain group of people realizing that genetically they were recessive in comparison to the masses of the world. And that survival parasite was used to conquer the rest of the world. And the main weapon, the main tool that was used to push and separate, to push that survival space and separate the masses to control was the system of racism, white supremacy. Like I said, you could talk all day about how racism is bad. Ooh, we shouldn't even be talking about this. There's so many other subjects we could be talking about. But it's harder to actually go into the depths of why racism was invented, why it was used, and why it's still being used today. It's easy. It's an easy de-evolution of perspectives. It's like children in elementary school, an intelligence based upon elementary school instead of a university perspective. In school, children learn about the alphabet. They learn about basic perspectives, colors. This color is red. You spell it this way, R-E-D. These are the red people. This color is black. These are the black people who aren't black. You spell this B-L-A-C-K. So right there is a questioning of your reality seated at a very early age. I'm called black, but I'm not black. People aren't black. What is that? You're white. People aren't white. What is that? Why is that? Never speak about it. Immediate problems seated in these children from day one. The red man, the yellow man, the same kind of problems relating to why Europe is called a continent, going against the very definition of what a continent is. And then when you ask the system of authority, you're tested on this. <laughs> it's, I remember this from school. This was one of the first problems I ever had in school was a teacher, a person, a white person of authority telling me the definition of a continent, then testing me on what a continent is, how many continents there are. And when I say there are six instead of seven and me being marked wrong <laughs> for that because Europe is considered, for whatever reason, a continent, masses of people around the world. Why? They don't ask why, because you don't want to rock the boat. This is this boat of recessive intelligence. They make you believe things that are not true. 
Believing in heliocentrism is no different than believing that Europe is a continent. You're forced to believe it for a particular purpose. So once these crusades, these conquests went around enslaving the masses of the world, they took all the riches, all of the jewels, all of the precious metals, turned it into their crowns, still having these stolen artifacts to this day, saying it's theirs. With all the new age morals and belief systems, all these people talking about, all these Karens of the world, talking all this shit about how things are supposed to be, staying dead silent on these stolen artifacts, being loud as hell about people just walking around every day, but crickets when it comes to actually righting these wrongs. This is why the story of the indigenous copper-colored people of the Americas, this is why that story is so threatening. This is why not many people are going to speak on this issue because it's connected to so many other bigger issues. It's connected to resources. It's connected to land. It's connected to people. And all of that land, resources, and people is power. And when you activate that power in a people who have been disempowered for centuries, you are bringing down your own empire. Do you think a people who are aware of this reality, are going to do that? Do you think they will bring down, willingly bring down their own empire? No. In fact, they will double down and expand their empire, which is why they are moving to this United Nations, new age, we're all one, we're all human, race doesn't matter perspective, which is why I said the so-called black and brown people who are not speaking about the origins and the weapon that is racism, the weapon that is not knowing, not connecting, not activating who you are on that level. Beyond color, getting to land, getting to culture, getting to history, getting to ancestry, the people who are keeping you from that information are a direct threat and working more for the teams of mass control than the masses of people. Whether they're doing it passively or not does not matter. The weapon still strikes the same. Whether their eyes are open or not, when they hit you with that sword, it still inflicts that same amount of damage. So on a more specific scientific perspective, you can see this on television shows. Largely, they have a lot of these television shows now that are more mainstream, where people are talking about aliens and Bigfoot and ghosts and crystal skulls and all this stuff that ancient people were connected to and aware of and have perspectives of, but were too primitive and savage to really know about. So they have to constantly downplay our ancestors to upplay their theoretical universe, their blatant lies, their beliefs in things like the monkey evolution. Believing in Darwinian monkey evolution makes you believe in the superiority of this recessive intelligence that has a control over the masses of the people right now. Believing in monkey evolution is the seed to believing in the Big Bang. Monkey evolution actually comes before the Big Bang in your perspective because the monkey evolution is how you perceive reality, who you are, what you are. So they tell you the Big Bang came first and spawned everything else. They're fairy tale dinosaurs to their monkeys to you to Elon Musk. Well, he's the next stage of humanity. Yeah. If if people are evolving, he's he's like looking at us from the next spot. He's like, hey guys, uh, I've got some ideas. <laughs> he's doing so many different things at the same time. It it's it's almost impossible. Like it, I don't understand how he does it. Yeah, I, I've seen him do it, and I still don't understand it. And then convince you over and over again with people like Neil deGrasse Tyson that the reason why monkey evolution exists is because of the Big Bang. So when you go from that to that, you believe in the way they think, not only what they think about, but how they think about what they think about. And once you start getting into the space of how they think about what they think about and how you think about what they think about, 
That's where the mind control takes grip on the masses of people because you're no longer required to think about anything because you now have an institution of thinkers that think for you. This is what this recessive intelligence university system is doing and has developed over hundreds of years. And they needed pillars of that institution to hold up this mind control. Pillars like Darwinian evolution, like the heliocentric model, like racism. How do you think these universities got funded? Look at these military bases named after Confederate soldiers, named after people who had slaves. Even beyond that, you have presidents who are etched in stone into the side of mountains on sacred land, who they themselves were fucked up beyond all recognition, completely bass backwards in their belief systems, in their actions. Andrew Jackson, known as Sharp Knife by the Native people because of his attack using the government to scalp the natives, to scalp us on your money, in your school books, praised. No different than celebrating Thanksgiving every year. Hiding genocide under this, look at it from that time, a new age perspective of giving thanks, coming together. We're a family. Who the fuck is going to say anything against that? You can't. This is a psychological weapon. Columbus Day. Thanksgiving Day. Oh, we're just coming together to give thanks. No, there's an energy behind this purpose, behind this feasting. It's a maintaining of ignorance. You have generations of people. People are working so much throughout their lives, they never have time to come together with their family. There are only so many things that people can feel good about throughout the year. Holidays are one of them. You think the system, the, the mind control masters don't know about this? So just as these holidays are used to maintain this ignorance, this mind control, this lack of addressing, this lack of taking responsibility, the same government, that is responsible for all those massacres still running rampant today. Never going to question Thanksgiving. Never going to question Christopher Columbus Day. Never going to question the reason why they gave you a Black History Month to tell you your story, implying why there's not a White History Month, because White History is just plain history. But beyond that, plain history doesn't want to be seen. They have a history month for you. <laughs> you think it's for your benefit? What have they ever given you for your benefit? So you have a black history month and you're stupid enough to celebrate that shit because these ignorant ass house Negroes who are in the pockets of this system are convincing you to follow that shit every year. Every day, keeping you from yourself, keeping you from a real connection. So the history, the intelligence of our ancient ancestors have to be downplayed. Oh, we don't know who built the pyramids. We don't know who built Sacsayhuaman. We don't know who built Machu Picchu. We don't know how these things were built, but they were primitive and savage. That's what we do know. That's what they tell you. They do know that you were some primitive savage beasts. And they do know that you were around some kind of technology that is beyond even the technology of today. And since you were a savage beast that is known in their truth, that is what they are factually aware of. Why? Like I said, their facts, their truth are based upon their theories. Their monkey evolution has proven that the people of the past are savage beasts. And if there's a technology back at that time when those savage beasts ruled the world, then that technology must have been built by some kind of alien, which is very convenient for their new age alien mind controls 
that are being ushered into the reality of today, which is why they have these alien TV shows on today. There was just a TV show playing at the family house (laughs) talking about these crystal skulls. Oh, that's what it was. William Shatner was narrating this shit, talking about how the technology of the crystal skulls was beyond even the technology that we have today. And since these crystal skulls date back so many centuries ago, it must have been some kind of alien that had invented these or that had made these because back then, these savage ancestors, these savage beasts, they couldn't have had this technology. They couldn't have done this. They didn't have the technology that we have today. And we're not even able to create this. And beyond that, these crystal skulls could be connecting and opening other dimensions and doorways. And still having those questions, never connecting our ancestors to that storyline. So first, they were too dumb and savage to make them. And secondly, if they're aware of how they open up dimensions, they were also too savage and dumb to tap into that. Even though they know that our people were connected to the stars, were connected to other dimensions, through the prophecies and so on and so forth. They are aware of this. So they are adamantly, knowingly keeping you away from certain perspectives so that you stay aware of other perspectives that work against you, that keep you ignorant, that keep you down, that keep you focusing on their theoretical universe. Because you have two systems of awareness in this reality, in this mind control. You have your university intellects that tell you facts based upon their theories, facts based upon the Big Bang, facts based upon evolution, facts based upon heliocentrism. And those facts expanded into deeper mind controls of going to Mars and landing on the moon to express their dominance over the universe, not only just the Earth, but the universe doubling down on your mind control. Universities pushing the facts of evolution, intellectually keeping you down. So if technology is the peak of all human evolution and so-called white people are in control of society right now, they are actually subconsciously seen by the masses as the evolutionary peak of humanity overall. This is why it's so important to connect with your ancestry and the real history because it breaks these mind controls. It breaks these illusions. And at the same time, it empowers you to be aware of this. So like I said, there are the two systems of intellect and they work together. The one is the university intellectuals and the two are the theoretical intellectuals. They might be seen as the same, but they're not. They work together, but they are separate entities. The theoretical intellects are the ones who can theorize about the universe to the umpteenth degree, into infinitude, forever. Their theories feed the broken theories that the universities adopt. So these theoretical intellects are the ones who just continually develop these theories upon theories upon theories forever generating all of these mind controls and it's the university intellects that pick and choose which perspective they want to install into the mind controls of the university intellect they they pick these theories to choose to use as a mind control fact They pick these theories to back up their university facts. Meanwhile, always avoiding the observable truth of this reality and the ancestral truths that we broke down so many centuries ago. So this is what your TV show scientists are based on. You have your theoretical scientists who are talking about Sasquatch, talking about dimensions, talking about aliens talking about crystal skulls, talking about 
everything that you see on TV, the shows that never come to any conclusions, these ghost shows, never come to any answers, never show anything on camera, but they definitely show you that they're doctors, that they have researched this for however many years. They show you that. They want you to know that. But just like these ghost shows, their systems, their perspectives never come to any conclusions. But what happens when you watch those shows? They make millions and billions of dollars off of marketing and advertisement for you tuning in to their lies, to their bullshit. And since you've been fed all of this mind control for so long from so many different perspectives, it adds this commercial credibility to the university scientists, to the university intellects, who will sell you a mind control later on down the line that has been subconsciously fed to you through entertainment intellect by these theoretical intellectuals. This is how these systems can evolve over time. This is why you have people on television talking about aliens and Sasquatch and ghosts and all this other stuff. Back in the day, back in the 60s and 70s and even the 80s, this shit would never be on TV. You wouldn't see them talking about this stuff. The same reason why they have these shows that are talking about the criminal behavior of the government. In these same circles of intellect, you have them talking about perspectives of 9-11. They don't go too far about how a simple fire could have brought down an entire building, a building seven, but they'll make an entire show on how this came down at free fall speed in order to feed your awareness only up to a certain point. Because if you go past where they want you to go, you'll become a threat. And also, and what I've been saying is that they have to feed you this information as your consciousness, as your awareness grows, because you believe in the system. If they put out this information, like I've said with these late night talk show hosts and people like Russell Brand and comedians and celebrities who feed you little crumbs of truth, little crumbs of conspiracy perspectives, they feed you this to keep you docile, to keep you from doing anything. Because you're constantly thinking that the system's going to fix itself. You're constantly thinking that the system is on your side. Because it seems to be growing. It seems to be changing. It seems to be evolving into holding itself accountable for the crimes that got it to where it is today. That's not the design. That's the trick. That's the show you're watching. The design is to sell you that. So you won't do anything and you allow the system to grow into its next level of mind control. Because once you get enough information about these conspiracies, they can just install another distraction and move on to the next storyline. And since, like I said before, since it's about telling you how to think and following the people who think for you, it doesn't matter what they have you thinking about because they can just turn the channel to the next distraction, to the next program. So on these programs, you have these confident, passive-aggressive assholes who are just constantly dismissing your people, constantly dismissing your ancient ancestral intelligence, dismissing the intelligence that's in your blood to have you worship their Darwinian evolution of the intellect of today, to worship the mind controls that they call a higher awareness, a more evolved perspective that is today. And like I said, this is a worshiping of a recessive intelligence. And they'll just constantly have you in this circle of theories, almost discovering something, almost seeing a ghost, almost seeing Sasquatch, almost being killed by an asteroid, almost going to Mars. The only thing that they have actually done that you believe in, which is total bullshit, was going to the moon. <laughs> and we all know what that's all about. People who are watching this channel, we all know that's bullshit. So they had to do something 
to make you believe in their bullshit. That's what it was. So as long as they do that one thing, they could build an entire empire of intelligence around that and not have to do anything else. They can make movies that does the rest, that sells you the thinking for you around that. So like I was saying, there's something off with this recessive intelligence that is keeping them from tapping into the true nature of this reality. There's a group of people who genetically have difficulty with this realm, being burned by the sun, not being able to interact with each other outside of war and dominance. Are they the only ones? Of course not. But on average, what's going on here? This is why I said these people were aware of this and decided to take measures to keep this information from being known. So the generating of this artificial intelligence, these artificial perspectives of the rest of the world, this worshiping of technology, this worshiping of a false sense of the universe was amplified. This is why smartphones and modern technology is so rudimentary it's just so ridiculous and plain it's garbage and this is seen as the peak of our reality a fucking smartphone (laughs) in comparison to what they call the dark ages and all this shit yeah of course obviously but if your history starts there then that's your fault for falling for that bullshit This is why the history doesn't go any further than that. This is why you have a Black History Month that tells you that you were only about slavery. You don't have a Black History Month that talks about the kingdoms of the world, the developing of the pyramids, these other dimensional connections that we have, these cosmologies that are beyond this bullshit. Your Black History Month won't go into that. So they generated this cheap, fake evolved technology because they could but it's honestly probably as far as they could go but that's all you really need if you want to control the people and maintain your survival rate so they developed this cheap technology to have a cheap perspective of evolution of evolving this technology evolving this intelligence over time so when you buy into that technology you buy into the intelligence You buy into the illusion of Darwinian monkey evolution, of Darwinian monkey evolution, and you buy into the people who are at the peak, at the head of that technology as being the peak of humanity. And the proof of that is in your own perspective of yourself, the self-hatred, the bleaching of your skin, the straightening of your hair, the straightening of your nose. This is why everything is so backwards and you have those people who are wanting to make their asses bigger, who are wanting to make their skin darker. So as long as you have people hating themselves across the board, you can sit in the middle and control. So you have black people bleaching their skin and white people darkening their skin. Black people straightening their hair, so-called black people straightening their hair, and so-called white people installing silicon into their ass to make their ass look bigger chaos so in this chaos they're stealing time in this chaos they're maintaining this illusion of supremacy surrounding you by people who maintain this supremacy over you in your everyday reality even in your entertainment look at your referees in your football games your basketball games your baseball games who are the authorities of the rules of that little microcosm. The microcosm of baseball controlled by this team of European referees, umpires. A microcosm of the macrocosm that is the world. Look at that diamond. Look at the field filled with so-called black and brown people controlled by four, three or four so-called white umpires. Do something wrong and see if they don't strike your ass down or kick you off of the fucking field. Say something. Just look at them a certain way and they'll kick you out of the fucking game. Basketball is the same way. Ten people on the court, two or three, however many refs, will kick you out of the fucking game if you don't stay in line. 
football, same thing. You destroy yourself. Smash each other. Black and brown people smashing each other's head, smashing each other's body. Refs controlling, throwing flags, blowing whistles, speaking to the Coliseum over a loudspeaker, their voices radiating, not just to those tens of thousands of people who are around the game, but across the world, into their homes. Judges, even made TV shows with these judges. Look at Judge Judy. Amplifying their control, amplifying their dominance, the system overall. Look at your teachers. This is a big problem in so-called inner cities. Black and brown students being disciplined by a largely majority of so-called white people in these public education systems, indoctrination systems, politicians controlling the movement of the masses of people, stealing time by only allowing you the illusion of being able to vote them in and out every two or four years. CEOs, people who run all of these Fortune 500 companies, the riches of the rich, where did they get that money from? How did they get those corporations? How did these legacies get built? What were the foundations that these CEOs built upon? University systems built on the blood and the bones of the indigenous people. Stolen land, stolen resources. Politicians writing legislature that was focused specifically on maintaining dominance over races of people. Redlining by the government keeping races of people separate. And you're telling me that racism doesn't matter? This system of racism, white supremacy, just because they're using racism as another function of control that getting to the core of the issue doesn't matter? Theoretical science on television, in your schools, your Brian Cox, your Ray Kurzweil, all your transhumanism pushers, your Neil deGrasse Tyson, your Bill Nyes, all these people, cops, controlling on a day-to-day -day basis, having the authority to remove you from this realm completely because they fear for their lives. They have that authority given to them by this system, no different than an umpire or a ref having the authority to kick you out of the game. They kick you out of this realm for a broken taillight, for not even doing anything wrong. So like they put these individuals in your face, like the trending page, could they be trending information that was beneficial for us? Of course, but what do they trend? Mind-numbing, bullshit-ass perspectives. Garbage-ass mentalities and perspectives. Mind controls. And what are the majority of the people that they trend on these pages? Look at even your sports highlights, your top 10 reels, even the way they number these acts, these events, these so-called highlights. I've seen this and other people have seen this a lot. A so-called white person playing basketball can make one dunk, a plain, just a regular ass dunk. <laughs> and that's a number one play compared to somebody else who does a back, <laughs> a behind the legs, Upside down, they could do a backflip dunk on an alley-oop. That's equivalent to a so-called white person doing just a regular plain dunk. They have to highlight that. Even the way they put these, they, they number, like I said, they number them. If you watch some of this stuff, you'll know what I'm talking about. But this is part of that system, part of that control. They have to highlight themselves at your expense. In any chance that they get. If they have to bring you down, they will jump on that and harp on that forever. You see this a lot when you see TV shows, people, and even in your, your comedians, even in your own circles. People constantly talking shit about Bill Cosby and OJ Simpson. Those jokes that are ongoing, on and on and on. With all the white people, with all the so-called white people who have done the most fucked up, utterly fucked up shit in the world. The number of times, the number of jokes being made against Bill Cosby and people like O.J. Simpson is incredible. It's just fucking ridiculous. 
that would be another thing for people to like research who like to go into that stuff. Look at how many jokes were made against Bill Cosby in the last 10 years compared to jokes made against anybody else. It seems forced. You see it in Saturday Night Live. You see it in movies. You see it in stand-up. You see it on TV shows. It's just constant, constant, constant. When this whole system has done a million times worse than that one individual. So why are they doing that? Not just to bring him down. Not to, especially not just to tell a joke. But to bring you as a people down. His television show was about a successful so-called black family. There were doctors. When they bring him down, they're bringing you as a people down. Late night talk show hosts are the number one culprits of this shit. Is this to defend Bill Cosby or anything? I don't give a shit about Bill Cosby. None of that. No, of course not. It's to expand the perspective of how this system works. So like I said, these theoretical scientists will sell you forever what they can do what they hope to be doing for the rest of their lives for the rest of your life and the universities pick and choose the university intellects pick and choose from those theories forever they can maintain this mind control forever playing one against the other and they're playing like they're not on the same team you'll have university intellects who talk shit about these theoretical science who actually downplay them some of them, but for the theories that back up their university science mind controls, they will adopt their perspectives. They will elevate them. This is why you have the people who are talking about heliocentrism elevated, while the people who went against it were downplayed and killed. So in closing, keeping racism alive keeps their bullshit hidden. Because white people, so-called white people, are the most inclined to hold up and believe the bullshit. Because they are the most vested in this illusory culture. So keeping it alive on these subtle tones maintains the masses of people. Not only so-called white people, but anybody else who has something vested in this mind control. People on YouTube, YouTubers, they have a vested interest in maintaining racism. Because if they speak on these issues, how many subscribers will they lose? How many videos will be censored? How many of their videos will be demonetized? They will be disappeared. So they have a vested interest in maintaining these perspectives that control the masses. These are the dangerous ones, I've been saying, because they are walking that line that allows the system to constantly steal time and evolve their mind controls. And these people who are allowing it and in many different ways expanding it are making a profit off of it while claiming to be against it. From an extreme perspective, you can see the so-called white people who are talking about make America great again and you know wearing American flags and all about America and the American dream. You can't physically talk to them. There's no kind of communication that you can get to their head. The blood, they, a lot of them are even aware what the colors of that flag represent. They are aware, and in many cases, proud of the genocide of the indigenous people. There's no speaking to them. There's no getting through to them. So they are maintaining the ignorance, willfully maintaining that ignorance because it benefits them. So their truth will only go so far. This is why the QAnon information was invented. It was pushed to those people specifically to feed into that conspiracy hole in their perspective that needed to be filled. So they were given an anonymous Black History Month. They were given something to follow, something, something to celebrate. They were given a leader to validate their intelligence, because they were seen as unintelligent for so long. Even now, you can see how they're playing one off of the other by still playing like they're idiots. But they themselves think they're very smart, in fact, smarter than the so-called Democrats. But you can see the vested interest that they have in the mind control, in the systems that work against us, in the systems that maintain an ignorance 
of the real history of truth. They will not speak on this. They will maintain you being on your knees to keep them artificially above you. And the system will feed into them being above you, feed into you being on your knees to maintain control over everybody. This same mechanism was used back in the day and even today with these so-called white feminists who have all these perspectives about feminism and all this other bullshit separating the union between the masculine and the feminine, but specifically installing these white feminists into the so-called black power movements, separating the women from the men, and then when that movement was destroyed, what did those white feminists do? They went right back to their white men. Because these revolutions, these movements, these, these protests, these, this awareness, it's a fad. It's a thing for them. They're bored. So they jump in. This is not across the board. Like I'm saying, a lot of these individuals are well-meaning. But the point is, are they going to address the entire system? On average, no. They're going to jump in blind, like it's a game, like it's a show, be the soldiers for the destroying of that movement, and then when the war, when all the dust settles, go right back to their privileged lives and go right back to the system that continues to grow at our expense. And until we break down these systems that, ad that address the actual illusions of this monkey evolution intelligence, no one will actually address the real problems. Their white privilege is held up by the idea of superior intellect through monkey evolution. Their privileged way of life is held in the system of monkey evolution. They are superior to you in every way. The proof is in society. Look at your education. Look at your politics. Look at your financial systems. Look at your CEOs. Look at your entertainment. Look at your actors. Look at your teachers. They are superior to you in every way because monkeys have evolved to Elon Musk. And Elon Musk wants to go to Mars. And if he wants to go to Mars and he's the smartest person in the world, then by golly, we should support that. Let's get Joe Rogan out there to coddle Elon Musk's balls. Well, he's the next stage of humanity. Yeah. If, if people are evolving, he's, he's like looking at us from the next spot. And get Neil deGrasse Tyson to help out with it. Get Neil deGrasse Tyson on the shaft while Joe Rogan gets on the balls. And we'll push this system into the future. Keeping you on your knees, keeping you at bay, keeping our perspectives from being known, keeping us from healing is a threat to the very nature of modern civilization. We have to break these recessive perspectives that are worshipped in society. This recessive technology, recessive education, recessive cosmology, recessive relationships that we have with ourselves and with each other. This recessive religion, recessive idea of civilization, a recessive relationship to nature, destroying nature, recessive diets, downplaying these systems, downplaying the reality that this needs to change is a form of gaslighting. It's a way to keep you from healing. It's a way to keep you from addressing the system as a whole. Telling you that you're playing victim by speaking about the origins of racism, speaking about the mind controls of these systems, is a form of gaslighting. Addressing the historical facts of how you've been victimized is not playing victim. It's speaking a historical fact. And if somebody is telling you that you're playing a victim while you're addressing historical facts, they have a purpose behind that. They have a reason why, whether they know it or not. There's a reason why they have to downplay you addressing this. Largely, it's because you are addressing the foundation, the broken foundations. You're addressing the bringing down of their creature comforts. You're addressing the breaking of their privileges. And how this connects to the breaking of heliocentrism. This is why when I saw the information relating to the idea of flat earth or the not heliocentric model, 
it immediately clicked to me that this is a mind control, no different than racism overall. And it was kind of surprising to me that even with so-called black flat earthers, this wasn't as much of a big deal. They didn't see the correlation. They didn't expand upon the correlation. This mind control, knowing very simply that ancient cosmology, indigenous cosmology, is the cosmology of our people. What has happened to our people? So modern mind control cosmology, heliocentric cosmology, is the mind control, is the cosmology of a specific intelligence, a recessive intelligence that is used against the people. Well, what else has been used against the people? The ancient people. So just as much as heliocentrism was used to disempower the people, specifically our people, it's also used to keep us from empowering ourselves, to keep you down. Those are two separate things, keeping you down and keeping you from empowering yourself. Now, what other aspects of reality were used to keep us down and keep us from empowering ourselves? Labeling us black, labeling themselves white, the most obvious form of disempowerment. And we have a responsibility to break all forms of disempowerment, not just the ones that are trendy, not just the ones that are going to get you subscribers, not just the ones that are going to maintain a following that'll just kiss your ass forever. Anything less than addressing all forms of these mind controls to the depths, to the core, in the long run, is going to be doing more harm than any good. So hold yourselves accountable and hold the people that you follow accountable. That accountability is the difference between entertainment and real organic conscious movement.